Hi, everybody. It's Wendy Marin here, and forget it. All right. Hi, everybody, and good morning. It's in Pennsylvania. It's 11 o'clock. Um, welcome. It's great to see you here, and I notice I have some friendly faces with me on here. And what this is about for the next 20 or 30 minutes is teaching you ways and helping you find ways to keep yourself positive. And you probably know if you're here that positive thinking is something that for a lot of people comes naturally. And maybe for you it does, maybe it doesn't. But while we're on this blab this morning, I want you to think about ways and things in your life right now where you're having a challenge, where you kind of feel where there's doubt, where you kind of worry, is this going to work? Am I going to be able to do this? And so I'm going to invite um, people to come in and join me and sit in the seat and we can chat. Um, I'm also going to take a moment and ask, I have, um, we're going to start, I'm going to ask Maria if she's willing to come in and chat with me just for a few minutes, get the ball rolling. And the main goal here is helping you find ways to stay positive. Because I know as you go throughout your day, sometimes you can start off having a great day and sometimes a worry or a thought can start to seep in and you find yourself going, what if I can't do this? What if I can't do this? And it starts that little negative spiral of thoughts and you find yourself feeling bad. Um, you can actually change those feelings. You can change those feelings really easily. You probably haven't been able to do it before, but it has nothing to do with your skills or abilities to keep yourself positive. It's just maybe you didn't know how. Um, so think about while I'm talking, what's one part of your life where maybe you've been worrying about something that you have no control over? Um, that's kind of the worst thing that can happen to us when we worry about things um, and we can't stop those incessant thoughts from going on in our head. I don't know about you, but when my daughter first started driving, even though I taught her how to drive and I'm a good driver, that didn't stop me from almost constantly worrying about her over and over. And it took me a while to find the perfect way so I could stop that worry. I'll share with you what I did. Um, think about it. Do you have somebody that you worry about when they're traveling? Um, so I worry about my daughter, worry about my mother, worry about my husband, but I don't want to be stuck in that kind of worry every day. It just feels awful. So let me share with you something really cool that I use. And it's based on the concept that our thoughts have energy over us. And what I mean by this is if you, let's say if somebody is afraid of speaking in public and you have to do a presentation or you have to talk in front of a group and you find yourself going, Ugh, oh my God, I don't want to do that. What if I, what if I stutter? What if I blank out? I can't remember what I'm saying. What if people make fun of me? What if they don't like what I'm saying? All those thoughts going in and out. Well, the, you can even find yourself thinking about doing your presentation and having that feeling of worry inside of you. When you have that feeling of worry inside of you, it'll cause a physical feeling in your body. Maybe your heart starts to pound, maybe your hands start to sweat. So our thoughts have energy over us, don't they? So not to sound too woo-woo, but do our thoughts have energy over other things in our life? Well, I'm going to say yes. And the reason I'm going to say yes is this. Have you ever found yourself thinking about somebody and all of a sudden they call you on the phone and you think, wow, how did that ever happen? Of all the seconds and minutes and hours and days and weeks and even, wow, I thought about this person, I haven't heard from them in years and they call. Well, it happens. Is that because of our energy or we're thinking about them? Well, I don't know, but I kind of like to believe that our thoughts do have energy. We can get information in all sorts of different ways. So here's how I 
stop that thought of worry, let's say about my daughter when she's driving in a car. Um, what I do is this. I know I need to change my thoughts to change how I feel. And do you agree with that? Yeah, okay. We, our thoughts are the first thing that happens to us and then we have a new feeling. So what I'm gonna share with you, this technique is something you can do really easily. I'm gonna ask you actually to do it with me online just so you can kind of practice it. So if you could, um, close your eyes just for a second and just imagine somebody, let's say, driving and you're worrying about them. Just notice that thought, notice what images show up in your mind, notice how it feels. And we're not gonna hold on to this for long because I know it doesn't feel good. And what I'd like you to do now is imagine that person may be driving and imagine a beautiful column of white light coming from way up in the top of the universe. And this beautiful column of white light is a white light of safety and health and happiness and all sorts of health and wonderful things. And surround that car and that person, I surround my daughter in the car with this beautiful white light. So regardless of what the traffic is on the road, regardless of what's going on in her life, I encourage and I allow this white light to go inside of her to keep her safe, keeps her car safe and keeps her happy. And as a result of doing this, what I've effectively done is I've changed my own thought instead of worry, I've moved it over to sending love and happiness. And as somebody has just mentioned in the chat room, acts of kindness boost serotonin in the giver. And I can't pronounce your name, but I wanna thank you, I'll read it out loud. Scientifically, acts of kindness boost serotonin in the giver and the receiver and everybody else. So kindness can go is really vital. So when we're sending kindness, we're getting that kindness. And when I change that thought from worry to giving and safety and security and kindness, what I've done is I've changed my mindset. I changed how I feel. And then I can go, okay, good. Now, on the other side, on the woo-woo side, maybe I am keeping her safe. If our thoughts do have energy, do I want to send my daughter that energy thought of, oh my gosh, you know, accident, worry, fear, all that kind of stuff? No. So if nothing else, doing this to change it to those positive things will help alleviate guilt that you might feel just in case and help you feel better. It's a very simple technique and it's one where you can use to change your thoughts every moment of every time, every time that you find yourself in that worry kind of a moment. Um, you can use it on yourself too. It's, pr it's pretty cool. So I'd like to invite any of you to come in. Um, I'd like maybe Maria, if you wanna come on in and make up a worry so we can talk about what do you do to handle your worries and concerns and doubts and fears what if you're worried about somebody in your life and worried about their safety? Sometimes, even as parents, um, we're worried about, is everything gonna be okay for our kids? Um, I sometimes find myself worrying about, oh my gosh, what if, um, I don't wanna make anybody upset, but what if Donald Trump ends up being president of the United States? That's like either the biggest joke or the biggest fear. So, I am going to say hello to Maria. Hi, Maria. Hello, good morning, how are you? I am fine, thank you for coming in and joining us in this lab. Absolutely, thank you for the invitation. Um, before I talk about what I do with worry, I wanted to applaud you for putting the lab together, talking about positivity, and inviting people to not just learn and listen, but to also remember the things that we might already know. I think one of the biggest yeah. fallacies that we do or, or that we practice is that we don't actively seek out reinforcement. 
you know, we might read a book and put it down. We might, you know, practice a meditation one time, but we don't actively practice reinforcement. And it's it's in shows like this, um, you know, your Facebook page every day, your posts that come out. Those are the things that reinforce me every day. So thank you so much for doing that. This is just another awesome platform, and I'm excited that you're doing it. Thank you. And by the way, everybody, I didn't pay her to say this. <laughs> she will probably ask me to take her out to lunch. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's true. <laughs> No, she didn't pay me to say this, but I do know Wendy, and I have to tell you, Wendy's energy is amazing. Um, definitely a life changer, game changer. Your information, your your energy that you put out on social media is is fantastic, and I love seeing you on my newsfeed. Now, back to your question about what do I do with worry, and I think um, what you said is a great uh, um and one of my go-tos of using the white light energy, which to me is always helpful and, and welcomes peace right away. Um, as you know, I'm deeply spiritual. And one of the things that I remind myself of is that the universe is absolutely perfect. Even in its imperfections, it is still perfect. And that everything that is in the universe is also a part of me. So there's nothing different, different between me and the tree, me and the birds, me and the grass. We are all part of the universe. Therefore, I am part of that perfection. And I go and I look at the universe. I trust the universe. And I don't see trees freaking out when winter comes. They know to go dormant. I don't see the grass not coming back next spring. Everything just kind of works in the flow of the universe. And the moment that I start to feel worry, um, that is the moment that I know that I'm not in alignment with the universe. So I go back to understanding that everything is perfect and that I have to just trust that the universe is taking care of everything. And then I supplement that with the white light and I come back to center and my worry lessens almost immediately. So that concept of everything is already all right with the universe is not something that I grew up with. Um, oh, really? And in fact, I grew up with life sucks and you got to work hard and that other people can be successful. Other people can have financial security, but that's them. But I never, I always doubted myself and I never, you know, just the concept If somebody had told me that years ago, I would have thought, Oh my God, what planet is she living on? Yeah. And I'd also think, God, I, as my daughter tells me often, and she's 26, she goes, well, mom, I like the fantasy world you live in. And I don't think you're living in a fantasy world because I think everything does work the way it's supposed to work. Even when it's hard. That, Even when it's hard. That's the challenge. Yeah. And, and positive thinking. Someone taught me this a long time ago that positive thinking isn't just about positivity as much as understanding that what's happening in your experience is happening for you and what's is best for you versus to you. So even though an experience might not feel good, it might cause worry, it might cause issue. When you come back to purpose and knowing that it has a bigger purpose for you, then you automatically come back into alignment with the universe and back into alignment of, of moving the energy to the positivity. Because if it provides a purpose for you, it provides you a nugget of wisdom, it's going to help you somewhere along the line in your life. That in and of itself is already moving you in the direction of positivity. Got it. And the um, I was on Skype this morning with this amazing woman in Ireland, and she was sharing with me that she had had a 10 year, pretty horrendous experience of physical issues and depression and all sorts of stuff. Mm -hmm. And I was just so amazed at this woman because she said, she said, you know, it was a learning experience. She said, I've grown from it. Unfortunately, when we're stuck in the middle, of something horrendous or physical or emotional. I, I've never woken up in the morning going, oh, my life sucks. I'm so glad I'm having a learning experience. Mm, yes. But, but I mean, nobody's gonna wake up like that. That's when you start to- No, no, and sometimes being, you know, so I'm a big believer in not avoiding emotions. I mean, again, if we're in perfect alignment with the universe, then everything that's a part of us is perfect. And anger and worry is a part of that. And they're just signals to something better. And sometimes to shift, you just got to dive right into the anger, dive right into the worry. Just go ahead and let yourself be there as long as you need to be there. Just know you can't be stuck there. And one tool that has also really helped me, and this might resonate with some of the viewers, is 
When you allow yourself to just be really angry, get really clear about why you're angry. Get really clear about why it's really striking a chord with you in the way that you don't want to feel it. And when you get really clear on that, go to the extreme opposite of what that feeling is and or that why is. And the extreme opposite is usually the direction where you want to be going. There's a big window in the opposite side of anger. So um, how do you do that? How do I do that? Okay, so um, we can take it down to basics. You know, um, well, for me, I used to weigh a lot more than this. I used to weigh 50 pounds more than this. So it was not necessarily about me being, you know, um, worrying about health or worrying about being fat, worrying about my clothes not fitting, worrying about these things. It was me desiring health. There's a big difference. There's a big difference in, in how you're how you're looking at that. Instead of worrying about debt, what is it that you want? Financial freedom, right? So you have just touched on, I think, the biggest concept in positive thinking, powerful thinking. And positive thinking, for those of you who are here, you probably already know it's not about wishing. It's not about like when we were a little kid and we had – a little daisy and pulled off the things, you know, I would like this, I wish this, or blowing on a dandelion. Positive thinking is the act of intentionally changing your thoughts, changing your perspective, so that you actually can change your attitude and your behavior, take different actions. But it all starts with changing those thoughts that are here. Correct. That's the powerful thinking, not the I'm putting on rose colored glasses and I'm just going to pretend that everything is just fine. Right. Although I do that when I think about politics because <laughs> I don't feel like I have any control over any politics. Um, but when you're living the life and you're creating the life that you want, the politics have less impact on where you are because you're not living a life dependent on policy. You're, you start to create a life. I mean, there are going to be some things where it's going to cross over. Don't get me wrong. But when you start to really dive into creating the life that you want, then those other things don't become as instrumental to you. They're not going to be as impactful to you. Got it. And I've just invited another person in. Um, her name is Helen. And hi, Helen. Nice to see you here. She's learning it. She's new on technology. So okay. She'll, she'll turn that on. Um, and by the way, I'm going to take a little break. And everybody who's here listening, just go and tell a little bird so that other let other people know about what we're chatting about so you can kind of join in and, and chat with us. Um, Helen, can you hear us? I can. Hi, Wendy. Hi, oh, good. Welcome. Hi, Helen. How are you? It took me a while to get on. You know me and technology, but I'm here now anyway. <laughs> Yay! Hello, everybody, this is Helen. Helen has a limiting belief in her that technology is hard. <laughs> <laughs> so she's now proving to herself that that belief is no longer true for her so she can join in and do things. Yeah. Um, this is a, this, this blab, I'm always going to be doing short blabs so that you guys can come back and want more with these blabs. Um, and so you all can learn more about how to shift and change your thoughts. But I know, Helen, um, you probably, you've gone through a lot. How did you make a shift from where you were, you know, like in a, in a little thumbnail sketch? How did you make that shift and change? No pressure, Wendy, in a little thumbnail sketch. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I'm the Irish woman that you mentioned. Thanks, thanks Wendy, um, that you were talking to this morning. And yeah, I, I made a big, big, big U-turn, as I told you this morning. Um, how I did it, I think, was there was about three years when it was literally survival. Um, and it wasn't really about thinking. It wasn't about anything except getting through the days, as I said to you, Wendy, this morning. Um, and I won't go into any of that now because it's far too deep for and too broad for here. But I have a very good friend who was with me all through it. And um, she kept saying to me, it's all learning. And I used to say to her, uh, I don't know whether you like language on your blabs, um, Wendy, but I tell her basically, 
I don't want to know about learning. I've learned enough. Stop enough already, you know. But I, she made me think. Um, and I suppose it was when I was coming out the other side of a really horrible three years that I began to look back at all I had learned in those three years and everything that had changed in the way I looked at the world. And, um, you know, I had to go back and say, you know what, Noreen, you were actually right. It was all a lesson, but it was becoming too much of a lesson. I needed things to turn around as well. And they did begin to turn around. But a very big part of it, I think, was believing that they would. And she used, she used to say to me, it's all good. It's all good. And I say to her, it's all shite. You know, um, that's our Irish word. And she'd say, yeah, but it's all good. And I didn't get it for a long time, but I get it now. Uh, it is all good. And it's all part of our journey because my very deep belief is this is only a passing through. So everything that we're picking up on the way is teaching us something that we need to know. So I had a couple of very hard lessons in the past year that actually revisited me this morning um, before I spoke to you, Wendy, because our morning is a long time ago now. We're, uh, I think it's five hours ahead here. Um, so we're now heading into the evening, sun is setting outside uh, in Ireland. So yeah, it was about, for me, I suppose, realizing a big mind shift. I was very resistant to the idea of there being a lot of lessons along the way, very resistant to it. And now I've become very open to it because I realize they're all teaching me something that I need to know now. So everything I've learned in the last three years, I needed to know. Um, I'll give you a very quick example, if you like, Wendy. Sure. Um, so I suppose about four years ago, I was very, very naive, very naive. I, I grew up in a very tight knit community and I really believed that everybody you meet in life is your friend hello, like I got to 50 and I still believed everybody was your friend. It wasn't true, but I was very resistant to not believing that. Um, and now I've learned that everybody is not your friend and that's okay. I think why I resisted it was the part that it wasn't okay if everyone was your friend. I wanted to be in happy, clappy land. Now I have this belief that I meet people for a reason and it's all positive. So when I meet them, they're teaching me something. Even if it's something that isn't very pleasant to learn, it's something I needed to learn. So some people I've met in the last year, it was a very, very hard lesson. And I've got a very soft heart, which needed to toughen up, basically. Um, so I suppose my thinking has come around in that way, in that now I don't see things as bad. I see them as necessary. So I don't know. I went around that the houses there with that, Wendy. I don't know whether it was any way useful to what you're saying. Yeah, a lot of use. So when you were talking, Helen, and for those of you listening, I think you probably heard this. You know what? I just had a thought when you were chatting that when you were going through all that stuff and you accepted that it was a learning experience, and I wonder if that moment of accepting that it was a learning experience, because you said it, things started to turn around after that. Yeah. And so yeah. the word accept is like showing up in neon lights in my head that when we accept those new beliefs, when we accept that new beliefs about our life and the universe and the people around us, that somehow accepting and allowing is a much gentler way of being with our own selves and helps us change our perspective on the whole world. Absolutely. And Absolutely. So I'm yeah. going to go out to this afternoon and needlepoint a pillow that says accept <laughs> and allow because <laughs> I realized that those words were not, those words really shouted out to me. And maybe it was that point of accepting that allowed you to make the change rather than fighting. Um, Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, I think that, that's very true for me, yeah, yeah. And I, I know, and I'm gonna go on a slightly different topic, not different topic, but as a certified hypnotherapist, I help people with pain management. And I found that when people are fighting their pain and fighting their pain or fighting whatever's going on, 
that fighting almost adds fuel to the fire and makes it worse and worse. And when they accept, okay, I'm here, let me find out how I can get over to here, that's when things can start shifting over. Mm -hmm. So maybe we need to be acceptance missionaries out there to help people accept where yeah, accept and be realistic too because i also tell people you know that the road to positivity is not one extreme to the other i mean i talked about you know things that make you worry or angry help you open the window I to, want it to be one fa i want to go fast well i say move an inch an inch an inch because helen and listen to listening to you talk you talked about not everybody being your friend and the p people that didn't prove to be friends in the way we traditionally think of as friends probably also served a purpose for you in your learning and in your growth. So they serve something great for you. But in, in the midst of that, depending on the experience, it's just, it's just that slight shift to the right. And, it, and each, each slight shift to the right of positive, going towards positivity expands a little bit more, expands a little bit more. It just opens the road and the travel towards positivity a little bit quicker. But that doesn't mean that you're completely void of a bad experience either. But, you act, but, but getting to positivity gets quicker because you find purpose. Yeah, I think that's a very good point, actually, Maria. Um, and I've seen that an awful lot in people I've worked with who have been through very serious addictions. Mm -hmm. um, uh, when they come to accept, I mean, it's the resistance, actually, what you said, Wendy, about the resistance brings an awful lot of pain. And I worked with people um, with addictions, and once they accept, they learn to go beyond, or life goes beyond really rather than they go beyond but when when they accept that certain things are rather than fighting them that's when they come into an amazing phase of their lives so there's a very big part of acceptance i think what you're saying there marie is very very true boy we are three wise ladies aren't we <laughs> <laughs> well you've got one wise life there so yeah <laughs> <laughs> um, and so, by the way, everybody who's listening, um, the these two women who are on this lab with me, Maria and Helen, um, I met through a Facebook group, and all of us have Facebook pages. So I'm just going to give you, what, you guys just a moment to share your page so you can ask people to come in and like your page. Maria? I am on Facebook as One Wise Life. You'll recognize me with a big owl on there. So go to Maria's go to Maria's page and like it. And when you after you click the like button, go and click the notifications so you get to see her posts because yes. she's posting some amazing graphics and pictures and quotes that just thinking about them is going to make a big difference. Oh, thank you so much. I you know I really do try to post every single morning uh, specifically to get your stay, your day started. So thank you. And she so Helen um, also has an amazing Facebook. By the way, Maria, how many followers do you have on Facebook? How many likes? Um, I, I'm broaching about 45,000, something like that. Ooh. Okay. What's that tell you guys, everybody? People mm. like what Maria has to say. And <laughs> Helen has, what, 72,000? Yeah, I think that's it, yeah, Wendy. Yeah, my yeah, page, You didn't so. think everybody was your friend. Way to go. <laughs> <laughs> sure, yeah. Um, my page is uh, Essence of Your Heart, and I suppose it sums up, I work from a very heart-centered place, um, as I said earlier, a heart that had to get a little bit hard on the exterior, but is still very soft on the interior, and yeah. I post mostly, I think we all do really, very heart-centered messages, but also incorporating our thinking because our thinking really drives what goes on inside in us so it's i suppose we we all work from a very holistic place um and by the essence of your heart but it doesn't mean that your heart is the only thing i was trying to incorporate mind body soul heart into my page and i do that all the time so i think we're all out there trying to inspire mm -hmm. people so yeah thanks wendy i'd love people to come on and see if see what they can they they can get from the page yeah good and so for all those for all of you that are here i want to say thank you i am so grateful you showed up this is my first blab um and i've had a really good time my next blab is scheduled for 
Eastern time, Monday at noon. So it's Powerful Thinking at noon. And I hope to see you on it. So if you have lunch at noon, just take a little break or take some time during the day and join us. And so I'm going to encourage you. If you're worried about somebody or you think about somebody, send them that white light this week and just keep on doing that. The more you do that, you're actually training your inner subconscious mind and creating new neural pathways to train your mind to stop the worry and focus on feeling good. Stop the worry and focus on feeling good. And the process of doing this, as you train your mind, and luckily your mind is very trainable, you repetition is important. It's kind of like training a puppy. You know, if you train a puppy to lie down, can that dog, can that puppy do it immediately for the rest of its life? No, you've got to repeat and repeat. So I encourage you to use this light and come join me on Monday at noon, Eastern Standard Time. And my Facebook page is, excuse me, Powerful Thinking on Purpose. And please come say hello to me. Um, I My goal is to help you, to remind you to keep yourself in that state of mind regardless of whether you're stuck swimming in a lake full of alligators. <laughs> so thank you, everybody. I'm going to sign off and I will see you on Monday and have a great rest of your weekend. Bye -bye. Thank you. Everybody. Thanks for having us on. All right. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, Bye Maria. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone.